Good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here, and welcome back, guys, for another daily cryptocurrency market update. Every single day, well, nearly every single day, we release an update just like this one to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space and, of course, the market. So do consider subscribing. Of course, yesterday, we didn't release a market update and we didn't really publish any content on um, YouTube because, of course, we were uh, running a beast race and our 31 days of eating strict carnivore um, was complete. Uh, very eye-opening uh, experience from the dietary point of view with the sort of um, doing the carnivore diet. Um, a very rewarding and eye-opening experience indeed. Uh, and then, of course, fitness is something um, that, you know, we're very passionate about and we think that physical fitness is very, um, and mental fitness go uh, hand in hand. So, I do apologize for uh, not making a video yesterday. Uh, if you guys aren't already following me at all in at Real All In Crypto, please do come over uh, and consider um, giving me a follow. But this is going to be a daily market update, not a uh, dietary and um, fitness uh, vlog. Um, and we're going to be setting you guys up for the week ahead. You know, we're we're entering a new week for the markets. You're going to get the futures markets for the traditional markets opening tonight. Um, and we're going to be looking at some macro data. And of course. September is coming to a close and that's going to bring about October and November. And they are uh, historically very good months for Bitcoin, certainly November uh, and also the stock market. Um, so we're going to be looking at that. We'll be looking at Bitcoin, a little bit of price action, a little bit of a technical analysis. And then as it's the weekend, you know, there wasn't much news, um, although um, over at um, allincrypto.com, which is our uh, news media outlet, um, we did cover today the fact that Spain's central bank has granted Coinbase an AML uh, or AML uh, registration, um, which is a big deal. It's basically a green light for Coinbase to operate in Spain and um, facilitate the buying, selling and holding of cryptocurrencies, which is a big step forward, certainly with Coinbase uh, being at loggerheads with the SEC and, and, and the United States regula regulators. Um, but we are unbelievably... Coinbase is a golden opportunity, I believe. I think Coinbase is going to be one of the big stocks of the future. Um, given where crypto is and where they're positioned and where it's going, you know, we, we're very excited about the prospects for Coinbase. So where shall we start? Well, let's start with um, the Bitcoin chart as always, a nice clean, cleanish, a few lines um, drawn here. Um, and you, you're in a very, almost no man's land here, I think. You're kind of in between this range. You know, we ultimately are bullish on not just Bitcoin, but the markets full stop. And that, that's a stance that we took since the start of the year. And we've been very much validated, I think, across the board in that. Um, you know, if you look at Bitcoin um, on the year or the 5th of January, we started loading up again, you know, Bitcoin is still 57% up. That's not a bad return at all. But you are in this kind of no man's land. And we did say that actually, we would quite like to see something like this. What we wouldn't like to see is um, a real harsh decay of this forming um, what would be, what we would class as a head and shoulders that would give you an ultimate target of um i believe around about 20k which would very much line up with a, a number of technical things going on um which of course would be the completion of a five wave uh, impulse or a three wave impulse really we should say the markets you will notice markets move in threes all the time most of your technical patterns will resolve uh, around three wave impulse and it would look something like that but ultimately i do think that would set us up for um what would be more of a broad structure um as i do believe we are now entering um you know the, the, the crypto revival is well and truly here crypto is on the precipice and then we, we we keep you guys up to date with this on a daily basis of becoming globally it already is globally recognized but globally regulated and, and, and used every single large institution large um you know bank central bank are all looking to inter integrate DLTs, distributed ledger technologies, and and, and hopefully um, we've sort of uh, highlighted some of them that we think uh, are going to do very well. So we're kind of a bit uncertain about Bitcoin. One thing that I do know in the short term is it's very low interest, very low volatility, very low volume, um, and you can spill on volume, but you want to see volume come back in regards to uh, strength to the upside. So we're a bit uncertain on the short term. However, moving into um, October and November, you could have quite a good time ahead of you for the crypto space as October is historically a very bullish month for Bitcoin. And of course, November, the most bullish month for Bitcoin. Um, and also 
the stock market typically does quite well in October and of course December on, on that sort of Santa Claus rally run up to the end of the year. So we could see quite a good Q4 for uh, the crypto space. Um, there are a number of people that we really respect that are calling for downside, uh, like of course the crypto sniper, uh, Mr. Francis Hunt. Um, and you know this is something really to watch. It's calling for a short term head and shoulders on the 30 minute, which is um, uh, certainly a um, proposition. Um, and of course, if you lose this, actually you can see just how much you're interacting with what would be the neckline of this head and shoulders. You know, then you would be calling for a, a coming back down into this range, which could then set you up for a broader, um, a bigger head and shoulders, which we've just discussed. So there's a lot for us to watch. We will keep you up to date. I do think crypto is largely going to get affected by the sort of macro, you know, what's going on on the bigger term timeframes. And for us, we've really continued to stress that one thing we're trying to understand more probably so than anything is um, what's going to happen with the bond market, because the bond market is central to everything. You know, it is the cornerstone that finance is built upon. Money itself, fiat systems, uh, you know, are built upon debt. So when they issue money, how money comes into circulation is they kind of print it, but it's a double um, kind of account, whereas they issue the money and there's a debt that backs that, often in the form of bonds or treasuries. And the problem that we've got in the environment that we're in is, of course, uh, if we use something like TLT, looking at the United States, that nobody wants to buy these. Okay. Um, and the historic correlation between bonds and equities, because bonds have continuously been bought by central banks, is that they do well along with equities. And you've got this interesting divergence showing up. And for me, you know, it's really about what, trying to figure out what the bond market's going to do. And, and then, of course, the yield market as a result of that, you know, and, and this is all going to filter into soft, hard uh, landing. But we lose a lot of people when we talk about this macro stuff. Leave that for me to worry about. We'll try and sort of uh, forecast things as we go on. But we, we are ultimately bulls. You know, we, we, we do think there's a, a, a bullish period ahead. You know, I think you're in, um, you, you, you are going to get this crash that everyone's talking about, but it's not going to be at a point where everyone thinks. So I, I ultimately believe that you're in sort of, you're, you're kind of here. Right, you're going to get a, a melt up for the stock market, crypto, and, and risk into something going wrong. And if you look at the laggard effect of of rates uh, and things like this, and and you can actually kind of see that there is a lag with rates. If you look at the sort of economic data we're getting in regards to the economy, it very much supports our claims. You know, we we, we are very good on this channel at doing three sixty analysis. So we'll see how the months ahead uh, play out. Uh, of course, if you come over to at, um, not at sorry allincrypto.com. And um, we did publish an article today talking about spending central bank grants AML uh, registration to Coinbase. If you don't like reading, we have integrated an AI bot that will read it to you. Um, Coinbase, a leading cryptocurrency exchange, has recently received anti-money laundering AML compliance registration from the Bank of Spain. This move is a significant step in Coinbase's Europe expansion strategy and opens up new opportunities for both retail and institutional investing in Spain. So it's not just institutional. They're going to be able to facilitate... Um, um, retail as well. Uh, and this is very contrary to perhaps what the likes of Gensler and the SEC is saying. I, I, I think that Coinbase is going to come out smelling of roses from this lawsuit. And um, with my Patreon, we are actively discussing not just Coinbase, but other stocks that we think are going to do uh, very, very well. So it's going to be interesting. Um, let's just finish off as we'll try and keep this video short and sweet as we're just getting back into the swing of things after yesterday. And of course, um, it is Sunday. Um, so some of you may be hungover. No, I'm joking. Um, you know, we had a lot of economic data last month. Lots of PPIs, lots of PMIs, lots of um, rate hikes or no hikes. And I think markets adjusting to a lot of that. Um, but the, the, the week ahead is going to be an interesting one because there's not a great deal. You know, you've got Chicago Fed's um, activity index. You've got German IF. IFOs on Monday, Tuesday, you've got US new home sales. Wednesday, you've got US durable goods, US EIA uh, crude oil inventories. Oil is an interesting one. You know, markets don't like uncertainty. And with inflation raising its head again uh, in, in the likes of oils, which we were very um, early on calling a potential stage two, what, what we would class anyway as a stage two breakout. Um, we've already got the line on there. Um, you know, oil does look like it's now going to want to progress to the upside. And we'll see just what what happens with that. But so oil is an interesting one on Wednesday. You've got US durable goods orders uh, expected to fall. So we're seeing a bit of a slowing down in the economy, but we have a better than expected data moving forwards. And Jerome Powell really reiterated that. And then you've got on Thursday, US jobless claims, which is going to be a big one. 
remember there is a massive correlation with um, unemployment rates and uh, markets. Um, and this is the S&P that we have confusingly in Bitcoin orange. Um, so some, something definitely to watch. And then Friday, we've got French CPIs, German unemployment, Eurozone inflation, um, US PCE index, which is going to be one, uh, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, expected to rise uh, to 3.7 month on month compared to 3.3 uh, on the pre previous. So we'll see what happens. Um, and ultimately, we'll see one market that we've not even spoken about, but it is the probably most important market is, of course, uh, the dollar. And, and we're really trying to look ahead and, and figure out, you know, what's going to happen here? Um, you know, the dollar, again, is also in risk of being in a stage two after basing out in a very typical stage one um, fashion. But we'll see. Um, we'll keep you up to date on the data. We'll keep you up to date on, on, on how crypto is reacting. Um, ultimately, we still do believe that right now is a golden opportunity to be entering the crypto space. That is not financial advice. That's just my own take. And if you want to find out more about what we're buying and where, please do consider becoming a Patreon. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you guys. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.